Welcome to the mental health system in the 21st century. Could it ever change? Maybe eventually. At least 150 referrals a day are turned away from children's mental health services in the UK. Devastatingly, this number could be significantly higher if one in five of the trusts asked for data hadn't refused the request to share details of the number of rejected cases. <laughs> I wonder why. 150 children a day are turned away and all I pray is that they are okay. The statistics for adults is even harder to come by and here is why. When you hear that there are children suffering, you can't understand it and it just seems so puzzling. But the number of adults is far less important. Where is the shock factor? Is it even worth reporting? It's all good at attacking the stigma and raising awareness, but what do we do now there are too many people accessing services? There are too many people asking for help. And I'm in no way suggesting people should stop asking for help. Keep asking, keep begging, scream it as loud as you possibly can. Something needs to happen. Something needs to change. More money? Maybe. But it'll only get taken away. The funding is said to be increasing, but I don't see any change. 30 years ago, my nan was looking in every direction, asking every so-called professional. She wanted nothing more than to get her children the support they wanted, get them the help they so desperately needed begging for help, given nothing but closed doors and unanswered questions. 30 years on and my mum is now in this same position. Frustration, desperation, why is nobody there? Please help me help my child, please does nobody care? You make me feel guilty, you make me feel to blame. At first I push too little and then too much, just give me a clue. Do you think this is a game? I feel like I'm drowning all alone in this team. My voice is unheard, ignored, well that's how it seems. The parents and patients fighting the fixed scheme. Why are we living this societal game where your status and location still determine your gain? A postcode contest where your mind is to claim. But who is to blame? Why can't they see it is so unfair? To be in with a chance you need private healthcare. But sometimes for some people this is just not possible. But it's almost like they find it comical. When the mental health services gave up on me, I gave up on myself. If even the professionals didn't want to or didn't care enough to help me, what was the point in trying? I may as well be dying. But then all of a sudden you are sick enough and they are there, then just as you are getting to know someone, starting to trust someone, the funds are cut and they are gone. Again, they start to realise people are dying, so they come flying back with all this advice and these offers, and then they say, I'm sorry, it's being taken away. There is never any stability in the mental health system. The frustrating desperation, the anger, the feelings of guilt and loneliness. Even after the waiting lists, the weeks or months or sometimes years of begging, falling to your knees and begging for some help, even then the battle continues. This time not with getting into the system, this time for getting the system to work for you. For getting the system to change its rules and regulations to work for you. Because everyone is different. Everyone is different. Because talking to people in a calm and caring voice, offering distractions and medications, doesn't work for everyone. When I was 15 and in the early stages of anorexia, I refused to be weighed. I couldn't cope with the fear. A medical professional, my doctor, said, well, there's nothing we can do. She looks a healthy weight, but what I heard instead, she's not sick enough. Come back when it's too late. 
Where is the prevention, I ask? They answer, where is the money in prevention? Why do you have to reach crisis point to be accepted? Don't ever wait until it's too late. When I was 15 and deep in depression, straight out of hospital, had I learnt my lesson? I had a mental health assessment, she was 20 minutes late. Half an hour later, you're fine, goodbye. Excuse me, are you serious? I just sat there silently, answered no questions, crippled with anxiety. You think I am fine? You don't know my mind. When I was 16, I was discharged. Lack of engagement, refusal to be weighed. Why could nobody see? The pain wasn't going to fade. Somebody help me. Somebody hear me. Untie my tongue and help me to be free. I understand you're under pressure. I understand there is a whole list of people wishing for my place. But please, don't leave me alone. Find me a better place. When I was 17, I was only falling further. I would try to cry for help. Out came nothing but a murmur. I would scream and shout, kicking those that loved me. Just call crisis team. Oh my, are you trying to be funny? Call after call, there's nothing we can do. Wait it out, you're going to have to sit it through. Or perhaps the infamous, what can we do? I don't know, that's what I'm asking you. We couldn't forget to briefly just mention, there are positives with such great intention. Individual professionals who go above and beyond. Those who don't lie and say they wish they had a magic bloody wand. The ones who actually care and want to help you move forward, held back by regulations and procedure if only they could be altered. We cannot forget that these are human beings, most of whom do still have real feelings. They'd like you to hear from their perspective, just so you can see that they are also affected. When we choose this profession, we do not take it lightly. It's not for the money, and quite rightly. We too feel the frustration that comes with regulations. We feel the desperation from the patients. We are bombarded with complaints, but held back by restraints. Forced into a position where we must pick and choose who enters our service and who we refuse. When you are aware there are people awaiting your care, living in a mind they are struggling to bear, knowing all you can do is send letters of apology, dear desperate patient, we really are sorry, your name is still rising on a waiting list, it's just timing, we don't just sit back and let it brush by, we feel the guilt, the anger, the desire to do more, to stand high and shout, we are here, now let us be there thrown back down by policies, managers and beings without a care. We are given boundaries we are told not to cross, they leave us at such a loss. At the end of each day when work is over, our job is still there, our thoughts start to wander. To the people who never became patients, to the patients we were forced to let go, to the human beings who were failed by the system, and all we can do is keep trying to help them. What the professionals will go through, we must not let hide. It is not unnoticed and it is not unrecognised. Thank you to them, now let's open our eyes and stop wearing this disguise. The mental health system needs to realise that if we are to survive, we need to realign the rules and find a way to rise before anybody else dies. <sighs> Welcome to the mental health system in the 21st century.